Forks. Not where we're going. Not where we're going because this we're gonna is. Stab into it. God, that was probably pretty loud. Sorry. Sorry, folks. This is the Monte Cristo waffle here Ooh. on Chicken and Waffles this uh, Mother's Day. This, this fine, beautiful. <laughs> Ow, that, that's sweet. Powdered sugar. Oh my god. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You're gonna die. Okay. What'd you do? It's my turn. It's my goddamn turn. So today we're talking about Bates Motel and uh, Psycho. Bates Motel wrapped up uh, about two weeks ago. If not many of you know, most of it's out on uh, one of those um, picture picture box box screens that you can watch it on. Mm. What, what? What is it on? A and E. Yeah, it's on A and E. Um, Netflix, was. I believe, was the greatest thing they ever had there. It looks like they took a turn. I mean, I think they should start, a &E should start doing this, maybe. You know, get away from the Duck Dynasties in your, in your, in your... In your Locked ups. Uh, but yeah, Bates so, Motel. Based off of Psycho, the 1960 Alfred Hitchcock classic. From the novel, of the same name. Came out in 1959. Guy named uh, some guy Robert Block mm. lived in Wisconsin, I guess, blocks miles away from uh, Ed Gein, who two years prior uh, did some stuff. He loved his mom. He was a nice boy, <laughs> um, but you know he inspired such great classic movie characters such as. Uh, Buffalo Bill and Science and Lambs and Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But we're not here <laughs> about that. We're here about Bates Motel, mm. which encompasses aspects of the actual human Ed Gein and his mother, and wraps it around the nice little bundle that Alfred Hitchcock created for us. Yeah, I mean, the people involved with this one on. obviously we'll saw a deeper story. And a purpose to have a, a, a series, and it shows because it's really good. <laughs> he wakes up in his bed and finds his dad in the garage. Right. Yeah. Papa, Papa, Papa. Through many, many twists and turns that Bates Motel delivered after they moved to Oregon and bought the motel. It, it's then, only until years later he figures out that he. So, yeah, I mean, it really picks up when you know, Norman and his mom, uh, Norma, right, who's played by uh, Vera, Vera Farmiga, I believe it is. Farmiga. Farmiga, probably. Farmiga. She was in great movies like The Conjuring and Annabelle. Mm -hmm. Super scary things, and then uh, I mean you got Freddie Highmore from uh, Finding Neverland, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He was Charlie. Spider the plot thickens. Spider Man Chronicles, Finding Neverland, Arthur and the Invisibles. I mean the kid's been in tons of stuff, and then he's Norman Bates, and you know finding murdering people rather cathartic. As he as he said on Conan. Conan. <laughs> <laughs> I think he fits the role. Uh, Fit, he fits the role. <laughs> I mean, Charlie Puckett. Right. <laughs> Man, it's a, you know, it's a much deeper origin story to the Norman Bates mythos. You know, a lot more backstory to the mom and why she was the way that she was about individuals and especially other girls that like Norman. A little protective. Um, but the whole town's kind of messed up, right? I mean, these aren't good people. This isn't a good environment for a, a, a fragile young boy. For especially in his, <laughs> his uh, you know, state of mind. Mama's gonna put all of her fish in you. I mean, 
the chat. Well, aside from the two main characters, Norman and Norma, the cop, Sheriff Romero, my favorite. Kind of a scumbag. Kind of a scumbag, but a really great scumbag. It's kind of nice, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's been in other great things. Like Godzilla, 1997. It's ultimately a character building for what the movie would only took place in what, like... Maybe a day, a couple days, maybe. The, the TV show takes place over about three, four, five years. Hmm. However long I believe the series is, I think, is how long it did go for. It gets really muddy in the last season, where they tie it together with the film. You know, they, they didn't even try to compete with... Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's. Well, and that's how they built the entire world over the last five years. Yeah. That when they did it, it you know it was definitely different, but it was it didn't have to be the same. Right. And even in the Vince Vaughn remake, where they tried to do it the same, they didn't. The camera was off. I yeah. mean, the Bates Motel was definitely inspired more by the Anthony Perkins Psycho. Mm, they take these liberties that kind of change, change what we're right. familiar with and, and, and expand upon it at the same time. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Mother's Day feast. Uh, if, if there's still time and it's a, around brunch hour, make, make it up for Ma. this. It's delicious. <sighs> the raspberry. So good. As well as Bates Motel. Guys, if you haven't checked it out, it's well worth it. It's one of those shows that doesn't stretch out. Uh, no. There's, it's a good-paced series. So. It ended just as when it should have, unlike shows like The Following. <laughs> or, or Lost, for that matter. <laughs> this has been Chicken and Waffles. We're your hosts, Jameson Weaver. And Cosmo Kramer. Whoa! What are you guys doing? Jerry! Hey, check us out. Uh, we're the Animation Nuts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Mm, all the good stuff, guys. And uh, join us next week. We'll see you then. Happy Mother's Day, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Can you say it with some feeling? Yeah. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. <laughs> Alright, that was good. Right? Yes? Yes. Thank you.